Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, I mean I do mean over the top beautiful day. In the end times. Here in the Point Lonesome Swamp, leaving the Point Lonesome Swamp. Here in the Oasis of Freedom. Uh, to get ready for a visit uh, from my best friend on the planet. Uh, <laughs> You know, the closest thing I've ever had to a soulmate coming in tomorrow. So it is February 1st, 2022. We have made it uh, to February somehow. So anyway, uh, I have, uh, you know, my best friend in the world who I have mentioned many times, uh, not only has voted for Donald Trump one time, but she's voted for Donald Trump two times and she will vote for Donald Trump the next time. Uh, and somehow uh, our friendship has survived. Uh, the, <laughs> our difference of opinion on, uh, on, on, on the Donald Trump issue and, and various other things. So anyway, I've been thinking about, uh, about friendship uh, the fragility of friendship and whatnot. And, and guys, I just need to uh, make a note. I, I, I think that Vegematic uh, is, is smart enough uh, to realize what I was doing in that rant yesterday. I, I started off that rant with a quote uh, about, you know, basically friendships uh, and, and you know being destroyed uh, over j the shit that doesn't make any difference and then I went a baby went a little bit overboard and you know and acting out uh, <laughs> I I felt comfortable enough in my friendship with Vegematic so that he would uh, that I, I'm pretty sure the man understands what uh, what I was showing was the uh, just making that point. And it, it, anyway, that was just such a perfect example. And you know, thinking about my best friend on the wor in the world coming to visit uh, for two weeks and uh, how we manage to. Uh, you know, to uh, remain best friends uh, despite our political differences and our views on certain subjects, uh, shall we say. And anyway, I have, uh, you know, had this, uh, this rant before about friendship. And my definition of friendship is the three fundamentals of friendship. Uh, what is friendship? Well, there's this, uh, the three-legged bar stool of friendship, as, uh, as uh, Paul would say. The three-legged bar stool, it is affection, respect, and trust. Uh, without all three of those, uh, all three of those uh, bar stool legs in place, uh, solidly in place, you know, the, the friendship uh, is, is in danger. I, I mean, you've got to have all three of them. You pull away. Uh, any of the legs of the tripod or the bar stool and the, and the whole thing tips over. And it's this balancing act between affection, uh, respect, and trust, uh, you know, keeping that balance and keeping all three alive. And whenever any of those three parts of the friendship uh, are, are threatened, and you lose affection, respect, or trust for the, you know, the person who's your friend, uh, you know, that's when trouble starts. 
and so anyway uh, now now of course as I've mentioned many times by far my hardest issue out of those three ah shit gotta remember where the hell you're going hambone you're not going there you're going anyway I sit I get here yakking and forget where the fuck I'm going oh god more of these storage buildings but anyway my you know my tough one is trust I I have to admit I mean obviously affection is the is the easiest one I mean if, if, if you're not if you don't feel some basic level of affection for another human being then why do you, you know what I'm saying so that's probably the easy one uh, respect has to be earned uh, and so uh, it depends on what you respect in a person and you know when you know like I'm facing uh, been facing with my friend who voted for Donald Trump uh, for instance uh, you know uh, that's a tough one you just have to learn that that comes into forgiveness I think when uh, a friend of yours gets a different uh, thought about something and you have a disagreement in opinion uh, but it's trust trust is always been the toughest one for me I tend to get paranoid when the first when I first start get you know I I'm, I'm way too suspicious and over analytical of my friends motives and my my mind tends to run away with me that I'm thinking my you know basically I, I'm looking for some sort of betrayal behind every bush when when it is absolutely it has nothing to do with me and uh, but but I you know I get that and, and I'm not the only one you know that bitch uh, Lulu who blew her brains out you know she once said to me when uh, she was wondering if I was trying to fuck her, uh, not not stick my dick in her. Uh, there's no danger of that. But you know what I'm saying that that I was, you know, conniving, conspiring behind her back, and uh, she told me I have. She she said I have never in my life that that 100 percent of the friends that I have trusted in my life have ended up fucking me you know stabbing me in the back betraying me and uh, this is probably a one of the leading reasons why she did blow her brains out <clears throat> but uh, anyway probably shouldn't have started this rant because I'm about where I need to be and I haven't even gotten into it but anyway this all uh, I'll just sit here and uh, and and rant here in the parking lot of uh, the uh, the internet provider when I get there so anyway all of this has come up you know I've mentioned this book that I am reading this hilarious book called uh, the Every by Dave Eggers and uh, I just haven't had time to really get there and read the book I need to find uh, you know find some time in my life to read this hilarious book uh, but anyway you know what the roughly what the book is about is trying to extrapolate what all of this uh, AI and social media and uh, all of this Google, uh, Facebook, Amazon, all of this shit and, and all of these apps and this surveillance state and how all of these apps that we, that we turn more and more of our life over to. So of course the thing, the, the th great thing about this book is, is it, it, it's being ironic and it's hilarious and, and and he brings up and and Dave you know through telling his story he he makes these suggestions about 
you know, the dystopian future uh, of, of where we're going on this planet with this. And, and one of the things that he comes up early in the book, because I still am early in the book, and I know I haven't heard the end of this, is that early in the book, just kind of as a joke, uh, th this new uh, employee uh, at the place suggests you know she knows it's a joke but she about but she she actually suggests just to see where it goes it it's uh, basically what the app does it is what it does it uses artificial intelligence to uh, to judge whether your friends are true friends kind of like you know a a a lie detector on steroids where at some point in our near dystopian future that uh, the, these bots uh, are going to be able to uh, you know I think what uh, what Dave w w was suggesting that some sort of app that you are gonna put on your cell phone would actually kind of spy on your own personal friends and and uh, you, you know read them as it were and, and test them and they you know going through a uh, tone of voice and facial expressions and all of this shit uh, you know kind of like a, a lie detector test you know, look, look I, I've been in this fucking uh, uh, parking lot before. I don't believe it. We have a parking space. And uh, so so this app, what you do, and, I, and I'm a little bit unclear whether your friend on the receiving end of this app uh, realizes... I, I'm a little bit unclear on the concept whether oh, I, I can't tell whether the friend who is being investigated whether it's in secret and that the person on the other end of the line as it were doesn't realize that you're spying on them or knows full well that you're judging them so the so you know so the AI uh, goes in there and, and you know and, and grades your friend on uh, how trustworthy they are and uh, you know is it a is it a smile or is it a vamp you know what's that line from Pink Floyd do you think you can tell a smile from a vamp uh, great line and this is one of the things that uh, that this app, that this gizmo, you know, is doing is—is uh, is this person smiling at me, or are they coming on to me with fake affection to get something out of me? Uh, which you better believe is uh, ha happens all the time. Is you know, is this a friend or a con man? Uh, and so, of, of course, the idea, just the very idea of this uh, is, just, is just so gross, so absolutely gross to even come up with an idea of something this fucking gross. Uh, the, but but the, the irony, the, the ironic humor in this is that the people listening to this, you know, at, at whatever uh, Google and uh, Facebook and all the rest of them are going to become, they absolutely love the idea. And the reason they love the idea is because if this app were made available, and now that it's out there, uh, you, you know, in the culture, in, in this novel, you better goddamn believe this app will be available. You will be able, uh, I don't know if it's going to be next year, five years, ten years, but at some point, this is going to be available, where AI 
where you're going to be able to buy an app and either secretly or with full knowledge, whichever the way that plays out, but probably secretly, you know, run a friendship test to know who your true friends are. Are, are the, is this a genuine friend? Is this just, uh, you know, uh, a casual acquaintance? You know, I, I mean, I guarantee you that uh, these, all of these uh, personal sites, good God, could you imagine what Tinder and Pile of Fish, they would be all over this. And, and, uh, and, and of course, 99% uh, of humanity would be all over this. And, and then, of course, you know, what the author, what Dave Eggers is doing with his reader is making, uh, you know, the reader be honest with themselves. Would I get this app? If this, if I could go into the, uh, this little gizmo store, I'm getting ready, you know, the internet uh, router store. If I could get out of this truck and go uh, get an app to put on my phone or my laptop or whatever where I could secretly judge my friends, where I could run my, you know, my friends' voice through this app or where they could do facial recognition on my friends and look in my friends' eyes to see, you know, and let me know according to this neutral technology whether this is somebody you should, mainly should you trust. Uh, the affection and the respect uh, it, it would have a little harder time with that. Is, is this a person, uh, I guess on the dating sites, is, is this a person that I should be affectionate towards? Uh, and, it, and it all goes hand in hand, you know, with all of these, um, you know, background checks and uh, surveillance and all of this. Uh, where is the line drawn? Where do we draw the line, you, you know, as individuals and as a culture and a society with this shit, with this spying on each other? Uh, and, and I think that's exactly where it's going. And I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know if, if this technology were available to me right now, uh, whether I would be in the market for it. You know, I can think of a few people right now. Uh, I, I would like to at least get the input from a fucking robot. Uh, <laughs> we all uh, have people, I would, I would, of course I would love to be doing it uh, on YouTube. Uh, oh good God, if you could put this, uh, you know, on YouTube. And uh, what, what I would love to do, of course, being me, I would like to run the uh, I would like to run the app on Hambone Little Tail over at Humpty Dumpty Tribe, uh, like with that rant I did uh, with with Vegematic last night, for instance, to run the AI on that and and uh, and, and study is Hambone Little Tail a fictional character and compare it with uh, Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles and, and, and see how the uh, how the AI bots would uh, would would they pick up uh, the difference between Hambone Little Tail and Sam Mitchell? Uh, it would be hilarious. So anyway, I'm, I'm glad to say, as far as I know. You cannot get the French, the, what's it called in the book, I can't remember, GenuFriend, GenuPal or something like that. I think GenuPal or something, uh, or AccuFriend or something. Anyway, they're trying to figure out the correct name uh, for, this, for this intrusive app. But you got to ask her, would you buy this app? Would you buy this app? And usually these apps are free.
What if this app were completely fucking free? Completely free and your friends or your potential lover on Tinder or whoever would have no clue that you were doing this and it didn't cost you one penny. Would you or would you not uh, run your friends through the app? And I think uh, if we're honest with ourselves, we all know the answer. And it really is one more reason we are so fucked. And with that, I'm going to get out of here and, and try to squeeze one more, uh, one more month of, of internet connection here. Uh, you, 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 you know that this is Lulu's internet account. And Lulu is uh, supposed to be the one that, you know, making the payments and everything. And uh, they are unaware that Lulu has blown her brains out. And uh, what they are, uh, what they think is, is, is that Lulu is, uh, is, uh, ha has Alzheimer's and that I and her friends are her caretakers and at some point the uh, they're gonna figure this shit out uh, that that Lulu uh, is no longer on the planet uh, the, what I told them uh, is Lulu when you know when they wanted me to call Lulu on the phone so they could talk to her I, I said Lulu has no idea what planet she is on and uh, anyway each the first of each month I, I I need to do this if I can do this today and March 1st I should be able to get out of here with uh, w with this uh, uh, <laughs> with this what's the word anyway I got to get out there and uh, pay up a suicide's internet bill while I still can buy my little imaginary friends. Love you.